I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're finally into WandaVision. The long, 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 long wait (laughs) to get this show. And it's finally here. That's right. Mm -hmm. Our favorite comic couple is on the small screen, finally. And we're diving deep into this mysterious reality of sitcom madness. Yeah. No idea what's happening, but I love every single second of it. Absolutely. I can't wait. So before we get started, we've got merch, Patreon, all that's going. Go to abiteofpod.com. You can find all the links there. Find it on our social media. Super cool merch. Super cool things coming to Patreon. Bonus episodes. Bam. So let's get into it. Let's do it. Spoiler alert. So we will be talking about WandaVision. So, I mean, spoilers ahead. We always like to put that warning out there just in case. Mm-hmm. So there you go. You've been warned. We've done our due diligence. And let us go on to A Bite of WandaVision, episode one. So this one is black and white right off the bat after we get our little Marvel introduction there. It the goes iconic MCU montage of characters and that amazing music that hypes me up and makes my my chest feel a little light it lets you know you're in the universe now you have entered the universe it has been so long since we have seen that intro pretty much like 363 days (laughs) and i feel like they added some more people in there right some more heroes and stuff it's like the phase four i guess intro montage it's pretty sweet yeah so Right off the bat, like I said, it's black and white, and we've known from our research that this first episode of WandaVision is based off of pretty heavily the Dick Van Dyke show. Yeah, at least this first episode for yeah. sure. And and so the Dick Van Dyke show was actually in from six ran from sixty one through sixty six. According to IMDb, it was considered to be one of television's classics. The Dick Van Dyke show centers on the personal and professional lives of Rob Petrie, a writer on the fictional Alan Brady show. He's happily married to former dancer Laura, and they have a young son, Richie. The plot generally revolves around problems at work, where Rob got into various comedic jams with fellow writers Buddy Sorrell, Sally Rogers, and producer Mel Cooley, or at home. And so there's that split between office shenanigans and home shenanigans. I mean, it's a typical formula for, like, that era's sitcom. Yeah. And the coolest thing about this is, like, right when that intro happens... Then it goes to the 4-3 aspect ratio, just like those old TV shows, and it's in black and white. Yes. So right off the bat, they're like, we're not going to ease you into this. Like, you don't, you're not going to know why this is happening. You are literally just watching the show now. (laughs) And I love the theme song to WandaVision because it does that really great thing that sitcoms sort of have stopped doing, where it sets up the entire plot and tells you the backstory. So Mm -hmm. it's like letting you know, like... They're newly married. They're moving to a new place, a la Gilligan's Island or the Brady Bunch or the Beverly Hillbillies or Tiny Toons. Yeah. I I also like the part in the intro where she just like stole a house. Yeah. Did she like magic money into the person's bank account or did she was just like, it's sold. I always think like it's like I put a sold sign on so it wipes it from everybody's memory that it ever existed. (laughs) I mean, this is probably her reality anyway, so. Anything yeah. goes that she wants to do. I do want to say that the director, Matt Shackman, he has done so many other works from Game of Thrones to Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So I was really curious to see how he would handle MCU. And mm-hmm. so far, I'm liking it. I'm yeah. I'm liking it. Really good. And, you know, once we get past this theme song, you know, we see some funny things where he phases through the door and she falls on the floor. And then the way it's shot is sort of that three camera perspective, mm-hmm. which is so true to sitcoms of times past in front of a live studio audience oh that's right added an extra layer of just really getting into that world and settling in and all of the effects in here were all practical they're all used by like wire effects just like they did in bewitched and you could tell but it was just such a cool thing to see well yeah i love it you know you see things floating through the air and it's on strings and i just thought of myself in that position (laughs) i would be petrified the entire time (laughs) Where's Making, the wire supposed oh to go? My God. That, like, I'm thinking, like, what is, like, the tracking system like? Like, how does this really happen? I don't know. I feel like whoever's controlling those wires just has to avoid people's heads. Right? Like, just get to where it needs to go, but just you know, go around And then head. also, like, perfectly <laughs> land the plate on a shelf. Perfectly place it. That's, like, no idea pressure situations. Yeah. So we get – the first time we actually see our couple when the show starts is they're in the kitchen and Wanda's, like, magicking some plates around. Mm -hmm. which is super cool. And then Vision comes in. She knocks him in the head with the plate. And then we get this kind of sad quip about, oh, my husband has an indestructible head. I mean, he got his head smashed the last time. And she had a hard time destroying the Infinity Stone in his head. So it was like, Wanda, 
Yeah, don't call back to when Thanos stuck his chunky fingers inside your husband's skull to rip out the stone. Like, not a good morning I'm here for. Yeah. She's like, and my wife and her flying saucers. I was like, I don't exactly know what that's to. Is it when she saved, you know, Black Widow from Infinity War when those things and she like pushed him over her head or was it the alien invasion? I mean, they obviously know what happened prior to this, but I don't think. Or is he like, you kooky lady, you're just so crazy. You're like a little alien spouse wife. (laughs) I love you. And then the plot of this episode comes about in the form of a calendar date. Mm -hmm. There's a little heart on it and neither of them have no idea what it's about. Yeah. And it's really interesting because it's it's this thing where she's like, well, if you don't know and I don't know. And they're both kind of playing that they should both know, but neither of them know. Yeah, like an anniversary or something like that, but yet they don't know if they have an anniversary. So there's a, it's the show's happening and the writing, but you're getting these little hints of, do they know what's happening? Yeah. Because if they don't know even when their anniversary is, because did they actually get married? Mm. Like, he did die. How is he here? What is who and what's happening? Yeah, and, <laughs> and he says something to the effect of, I can remember literally everything. Mm-hmm. And yet I don't remember this thing. Because well, he's also dead. He's, right. And so that's this, you know, that's where things, right, right off the bat, things are blurry, right? It's like you have this character saying, I know everything, literally. Yeah. And I don't know this one thing. So there's already something wrong, mm-hmm. you know? And like, you know, they kind of play it off and they laugh about it. But as the viewer, you're going, okay, well, this is not right. True. I want to, as an MCU watcher and if you've been in this universe for long you always try to find easter eggs Mm. and little things so i was like does that date mean something i was trying to look it up i switched the day and the month to do two three eight right and i was like is there a comic with that so in avengers number 238 there's the cover of it has a vision and monica rambeau on it which if you know she's supposed to be in the show and that whole story is about how they're trying to get vision back to his body Oh. So super interesting that yeah. I don't know if that's what it is, but it just seemed too coincidental. Well, right. I think that's interesting that sh- mm-hmm. Monica Rambeau's on that cover as well. Mm-hmm. So As ooh. Spectrum. So pretty cool. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. So they kind of land on, neither of them know what this date means, and they're going to go do about their days and figure it out. So we see Vision. He's about to go out the door, and she says, wait a minute, and she points to her face, and then that's the scene we've all seen in the trailer over and over again. And he's like, oh, shucks, and he makes his... You know, I guess vision head become a human head. Yeah, he morphs into a human. And then he throws her a little smooch and she catches it and he's off to his day at work. Then, knock, 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 the arrival of Agnes. Yes, Catherine freaking Han. Uh Immediately, I immediately when she opens the door and she gives her these things as a welcoming present, I'm your neighbor to my right. Right. It's just she steals the scene 100 percent. every single time she's in it this actress is absolutely amazing and as agnes the nosy neighbor she delivers on being the nosy neighbor mm-hmm. she's just immediately asking her questions like where are you from blah 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 are you married what's a single gal like you yeah. doing here <laughs> yeah. she's like i'm not single she's like i don't see a ring on that finger yeah and it's super interesting that's like right out the bat she's just all these questions and i know like in these sitcoms that would typically happen but as it a modern sitcom, it's like, why are you asking these questions? Mm. Why don't you know this type of stuff? Like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, and so something that I learned from this scene is that if you are trying to fake a marriage in a new town, you should know the date you were married, your wedding song, and have some rings on. Otherwise, no one is buying it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And say that you're married to human man. Also true. (laughs) And she also says something like, oh, my God, did you have a moving company? Because everything's furnished completely perfectly. And like they just got there. Yeah. So, again, things are amiss. Things don't seem right. But Agnes is more involved in like who they are. And she wants she's just a nosy neighbor. She wants to know like what's going on with them. Playing the role. Mm -hmm. And then we see Vision at work Mm -hmm. or working on something that he has no idea what they do. There's this really funny exchange with vision and the co-worker and he's like what do we do do we sell something guys like no. no do we like make stuff no he's like we compute information and you're really good at it and it's like that does not say anything no. about what you're doing <laughs> he's like yeah since you've been here we've gone up 300 percent in production producing what yeah nobody knows <laughs> it to me it seems like since as we know this is some reality that somebody made possibly wanda that he's just working and not actually doing anything. Right. Because it's fake. Yeah. 
So it makes sense. And I know, and it is kind of funny, though, because if you think about it, like, I feel like in sitcoms, like, if especially if it's like a family based sitcom, it's like we see people go off to work, but sometimes we don't actually know what they do there unless they have a very specific job of writer or something like that. It's like in Friends, nobody knew what Chandler did. Yeah. I mean, the the name of this company? Computational Services, Inc. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the what blandest that means. thing on earth. <laughs> it's yeah. such a generic like, thing. So in walks Mr. Hart, his boss. Then it's found out that the heart on the calendar was because his boss, Mr. Hart, is coming to dinner. And in typical sitcom fashion, this means a lot for the boss that his promotions writing on it, all of that. That's super weird. I don't know. Never would I ever invite my boss over for dinner. I, I know things were probably different back then, but still, it's weird. In the 50s and the 60s, you had to show that you had a good home to show that you were a solid American. Yeah. And they could trust you. Gross. Meanwhile, the boss is overbearing and pushing into your home life. How rude. (laughs) True, true. Get out of here. So the next scene we see is Wanda at home and Agnes comes over with a magazine, Glamorous Magazine. Mm -hmm. And it's those typical, like, this is how you please your husband. This is how an anniversary is supposed to go. And they're going over all these things. And it's super funny. It's super charming. Then Vision calls her Mm -hmm. when they're there. And he was like, Wanda, I'm so nervous about tonight. And Wanda thinks that it's anniversary dinner. And he's just having like, you know, I'm nervous because we're going to be like all sexy and stuff like that. And but Vision's nervous because the boss has come over. And it's that typical hijinks. I think this is happening. I think that's happening in sitcoms where they're thinking two completely different types of things. Right. Yeah. So she's preparing for a sexy anniversary night with her husband, and he's preparing for a pressure-filled evening with his boss and his wife. Mm -hmm. Scary stuff. Yeah. And then we get our first MCU commercial. Yay. Yeah. And so this commercial was extremely creepy. Mm -hmm. It was for the Toastmate 2000 from Stark Industries. So we see this man and this woman, and the woman looks at the camera very odd. She's like dead in the eyes. Yeah, she, well, (laughs) I have a theory about them. But we see on the toaster, so it's from Stark Industries, and on the toaster, the first color that Mm -hmm. we get in this is the red blinking light. And the blinking light increases in intensity like a bomb. Like a bomb, yeah. And it just, to me, it's like, well, Wanda's home was pretty much destroyed from a Stark missile. Right. This is kind of, it seems like it's symbolizing that a little bit. And I feel like these two people, because we see them in the next episode, are her parents maybe? Mm -hmm. Or that's who she's seeing as her parents or they're they're manifesting that way? Yeah. And in one of the comics that we read, Vision and Scarlet Witch, uh, Year in the Life, there is a callback to, you know, the whole thing is that like Wanda and Pietro's dad is magneto but sometimes it's not and it's actually these well it's always is but it's these two heroes that take care of them they like adopted them right and then the the woman the the mom has a very similar look as far as the styling of the hair and everything so i think that's sort of an interesting callback they might be pulling from that comic for inspiration yeah as well super creepy yeah and so basically this toaster is representing how a missile toasted her entire family oh beep 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 and you said dead in the eyes how dare you Grr. <laughs> she had dead eyes. She was staring at that camera. She was not excited about that toast. I saw sinister eyes. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> She's like, ah, ugh. look at this. Who cares about toast? I'm dead. Oh my God. It's, it's all, everybody's dead. <laughs> uh. So, speaking of commercials, how about a word from our sponsors that aren't us? Wink, wink. Is quarantine making your everyday life feel just humdrum? Are you looking for more creative content to devour? Well, we're the guys that can help solve your problem. But we need your help, too! Become a Patreon member just like our very first supporter, Stephanie Marshall. Oh, Steph, we deaf love you. Hopefully that's her nickname. Check out our website, abideofpod.com, for more information and to bring brightness to your life. Gee willikers, mister, what's a website? Welcome back from that commercial break. So (laughs) we are now joining our heroes at the evening of the dinner. The hearts arrive. The hearts arrive. Also, this is another thing. Okay. Who, Who goes right from work to dinner? Let your host have a moment to refresh themselves yeah, to yeah. set up. I need to like reapply some deodorant. Yeah. I want to get out of my work clothes. Thank you. Yeah, that's a lot. Rudeness. <laughs> the rudeness of the hearts knows also, no bounds. But he's a robot, so I don't think. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're right. He's fine. He doesn't need deodorant you're at right. all. You're right. But we see that Mrs. Hart is none other than Deborah Joe 
Rupp. Kitty Foreman from that <laughs> 70s show. I was really curious to see who her character was, and I really hope we get her more in Me the season. Me too. Because she's amazing. That laugh, the way she talks, and how she steals scenes as well. Totally. Having her and Catherine Hahn in the same show is like, I didn't think I'd ever want that before. Or it's not something I realized I right. wanted. I, I have to say, like, with both of them, with Deborah Jo Rupp and Catherine Hahn, I'm always just like, just like holding my breath, waiting for the next time that they're going to say something. Because, you know, like, they're there to be like a bit of a, a comedy. You know what I mean? They're right. going to do something funny. They're going to do something silly. They're going to kind of lighten the mood. And so you need that. Yeah. And, and it's really fun. Mm-hmm. So when they enter... It is, you know, very, it's darkly lit. There's candles burning. Cue the saxophone. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Maybe a trumpet? <laughs> that was like a kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, tuba, maybe. <laughs> Nothing says sexy like a tuba. <laughs> <laughs> but so the mood is set when they get there yeah. because she thinks it's for the anniversary Obviously, it's not. And Vision's like, let me go turn on the lights and see where Wanda is. Wanda comes down the stairs in a nice, you know, kind of sexy for the time. Sexy nightgown. Yeah. And she goes up behind Hart and thinking that it's Vision. And then there's the big mix up. It's, oh, it's the Ah. mix up. She thought it was anniversary. It's really for the dinner. So they go back into the kitchen and he's like, what are you wearing? (laughs) Then they explain, like, what's going on. So she has the idea. She's like, I can whip this up. I have magic. Duh. I can make stuff. Even though they have no food in the house because Vision doesn't eat. And I guess Wanda doesn't eat either because there's no food in the house. Well, it's not reality. So I guess you don't need to eat. (laughs) Although there is one chocolate-covered strawberry on the table. So she prepared for their sexy evening with one chocolate-covered strawberry. That's all she needs for, like, a month. Oh, my God. One. (laughs) One! <laughs> that is not enough. Edible Arrangements doesn't do one. You need to get a whole six bucks. Uh, so what does she do? She whips herself into a, a delightful little evening dress and calls on the best neighbor ever, Agnes. That just happens to have pretty much a meal for four at the ready. Oh, yeah. The more I'm seeing Agnes in here, the more I'm like, there's something. I mean, there's something strange about everybody right. in the show, but there's something interesting about her. Like, it's either that she's like, Always wanting to help Wanda, but in this whole scene, so pretty much what the rest of this episode is, is Vision's trying to distract the hearts Mm -hmm. and Wanda's in the kitchen trying to whip up a meal. Yeah. Essentially. And when Agnes comes over with all this food, she like drops the thing and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's like she's causing a commotion in there. And I don't know if it's to like harm or hurt Wanda in that way because they're trying to conceal themselves. Right. They want to be the normal couple even though they're probably the most unusual couple in comics. <laughs> Which is like, well, you know what I was just thinking? It's like really funny, right? Because like in this town of, you know, Westview, I believe it's called, mm-hmm. right? It's like modern America. We have an English guy and a woman from Sokovia. Like they're already an odd couple to begin with, you know, to be living in this small American town. And thinking of Agnes, you know, we're theorizing that she might be Agatha Harkness, which is very much, you know, Scarlet Witch's mentor. Has to be. And it seems, and and in this one episode, like you said, we're seeing her sit with her and plan things with her. We're seeing her save her and show her the way and teaching her how to save these moments. But at the same time, why is she being so boisterous about it? You know, is she trying to knock her out of whatever state she's in? The, the Wanda that's created this whole world. True. That's trying to get point. her to wake up and realize what's going on. Yeah, which could be disastrous. I don't know how it works. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, floating dishes, transforming chickens, lobsters flying out the window. It has everything you want in, uh, you know, early sitcom. So since Wanda's using a bunch of magic to float things around, stuff starts making a commotion in there. And Miss Hart, as, you know, somebody of society and, you know, being a domestic housewife at this time, she's like, oh, let me go help her. I'm going to go help her. And, of course, Vision's trying not to let her go in there because she's floating everything around and using her magic. There's a part where Miss Hart opens the partition to the kitchen and then Vision starts singing. Yakety yak. Yakety yak to, like, distract her. And I, this is probably my favorite scene in this whole episode. You just see Wanda, like, Vision, like what? Come on. And then Mrs. Hart's doing like a little like conga dance sort of in front of everything. (laughs) So cute. It's so cute. So he's still trying to grab their attention. In the kitchen, Wanda's like getting really frustrated because she tries to speed up the cooking of the chicken and it turns, it's like burnt. And then she reverses it, but turns it into eggs. Mm -hmm. So like, it still seems like she doesn't really have her powers mastered. Yeah. Even though she created this whole reality. Thank you. 
But it seems like it's connected to her emotions. Okay. Because as she started getting more flustered, everything started messing up. Okay, and that like, makes sense. The stirring was going erratic. Just like, why? Like, why was she? I don't know. I don't know her magic. Like, why was she able to just go like, oh, okay, I'll fix my nightgown and make it a dress. But then couldn't be like, you know, like, steak Diane. You know what I mean? Like, she had all the ingredients. Like, why couldn't she do that? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I guess it's, I don't know. I'm leaning into the sitcom goal. That's what makes it funny. Right. But like, at the same time, I'm like, powers work this way but then they don't so push my glasses up i mean it's comic book stuff like they have all these powers but they only use them whenever the story calls for it so oh please i'd be using my powers (laughs) non-stop make me a frittata so (laughs) there's this really funny scene where because she's making steak diane she's in there and she's like diane she screams it and (laughs) they're like Who's Diane? He's like, oh, that's my pet name she uses for me. Yeah. And he was like, coming, Fred. I love it. (laughs) It's so funny. Super cute. I love the writing in this. It's just so cute. It's nostalgic. It feels like a sitcom. Perfect. So everything kind of goes amok with this. They're still trying to cook dinner. Agnes comes to the door again with a pineapple. And she's like, oh, you forgot this. You didn't answer the back door. It's like, girl, why are you giving away her cover? Stop. God. Because she's a nosy neighbor. She wants to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So all of this ends up happening. Everything sort of gets destroyed. Nothing goes right. So then she decides, well, I have eggs. So you know what we're going to do? Breakfast for dinner. My favorite kind of dinner. Oh, my God. I love breakfast for dinner. Mm, Delicious. So she floats everything onto the table. They turn around and boom, we're ready. There's candles. There's toast. There's eggs. Everybody sits down. And then this is when things get creepy. Yeah. Well, They ask them normal questions that Mm -hmm. you ask in a dinner when you're sitting with people you want to get to know. Like, when's your anniversary? Why don't you like, why don't you have children? I mean, that's a little personal. Right. Like, when'd you move here? Where'd you come from? And they keep asking these questions and they have no answers for this. Right. Mrs. Hart says, what exactly is your story? Mr. Hart says, honestly, why did you come here? Why? It's interesting because it's like interrogating in a way, but it's like Mr. Hart is being more forward with it. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say Kitty, Mrs. Hart. Is more like, let them tell their story. Like, oh, they're like, let the kids get to it or whatever. And it seems like they're trying to get information out of them, which Mm. we don't know any of these neighbors. We don't know who they are. Did Wanda make them? Are they really like outside agents in some way? Who knows? And so as they keep asking, Mr. Hart starts choking. Right. And the interesting and the creepy part about this was Mrs. Hart is looking at Wanda saying, Arthur, stop it. Stop Stop. it. But it's like she knows that she's the one doing this to Mr. Hart. Right. Also, nobody's like saving him. And so what's interesting (laughs) about these two things is that I feel like I almost feel like Mrs. Hart and Mr. Hart are two different sides almost. He's trying to get information out of her. Why? Why? Why are you here? Why are you doing? And she's saying, stop it. Stop this. Stop. Mm. So he's trying to get the information to figure everything out. And she's telling her, stop. Don't do this anymore. Well, yeah, also don't kill Arthur across the table. Who falls on the floor. Yeah. And Vision is panicking at the edge of the table. And Wanda has to look at Vision and say to him, Vision, help him. Yeah. She tells him to move. She's in the director's seat here. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. It's like things happen because she wants them to happen. But like, it's interesting that Vision, being an Avenger, or at least who we think he is at Mm -hmm. this point, like you would think that somebody would have gotten up and helped him. Right. Like, why didn't Mrs. Hart get up and help him? It's really interesting. Like, oh. and, and like up to this point. Right. So in order to save Mr. Hart, he phases into him. He takes the piece of food out of his throat. But like in like the actual storyline of this episode, other than the opening credits, that's really the only time we see Vision use powers. Yeah. And like changing moment, his face. And yeah, right, exactly. When yeah. she says to him, do this. So it's like she's created this reality where Vision is just the husband and this is when she has to tell him, you're a hero, save him. Yeah. So he saves Mr. Hart. Mr. Hart pops up and says, okay, well, it's really late. We got to go. Yeah, they act like nothing happened. Yeah. So weird. But there's a look that Wanda gives Vision, like, why are they le- Like, why, do- why are they acting normal? So it's weird. It's like she's doing things that she doesn't mean to or, like, mm. they're acting of their own volition. That's why I was like, are they somebody working oh, from the outside because right. they're like, like, oh, this is fun. Like, let's go or whatever. Like, let's just get out of here now. Right. Because maybe in the outside, what she's doing to the real Mr. Hart on the outside is killing him. Right. Yeah, something. I don't know. And then that's why the other agent's telling her to stop. Yeah. You're killing him. So they leave and then 
Vision and Wanda sit down on the couch and are like, yeah, we should be married. Like, why not? Like, when did we get married or how long have we been together? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows anything. And then she wills some rings into existence. She can make diamonds appear, but she can't make a steak Diane. Hello. <laughs> This is what I'm saying. Although, who knows what a steak Diane really is? No so idea. if she doesn't have that knowledge in her head, how could she possibly make it? <laughs> and then in the final scene, we see it zo- like the credits start rolling, just like a an I Love Lucy type end credit scene yeah. or the, you know, the end. And then it keeps zooming out and it and Sword Agent was watching this on a TV this whole time. Dun, dun, dun. So for my own knowledge and maybe for other people's knowledge, have we seen Sword in the MCU yet? Not in the MCU particularly. Mm-hmm. It's more. It's a subset of Shield, right? You know, Sword and Shield, and Pokemon. Sword. <laughs> Sword just as a very quick. This is what Sword is. So Sword in the comics is a little different than what they're doing in the MCU. So Sword in the comics stands for Sentient World Observation and Response Department. Mm-hmm. In the MCU, it stands for Sentient Weapon Observation and Response Division. Mm. So. Pretty much what they are is they monitor threats, like extraterrestrial threats. Oh, and she he made that flying saucer comment at the beginning of the episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And are they based on Earth? They're from Earth, Sword. Yeah, it's a division of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. okay. Yeah, so they're based on Earth. So that's the most we've seen from the outside world. It's interesting. I want to know how they're watching it on TV. Like, is Wanda broadcasting it onto, yeah. like, a secret channel? <laughs> right. Or just she's taken over all the airwaves and everybody has to watch this. <laughs> yeah. So this is why I'm thinking Darcy's involved. Mm. So if you remember Darcy from the Thor movies, her and Natalie Portman, Jane Foster, were monitoring, you know, the Bifrost and stuff from space, extraterrestrial. Spas. And that would make sense on why she's involved with S.W.O.R.D. Yeah. So, super interesting. Really interesting. Loved the first episode. Me I thought too. it was great. It was so much fun. I feel like when I'm into something personally, like I kind of completely give myself over to everything that's happening and the emotions that are supposed to be coming from a scene. So when everything was silly and it made me laugh, and then when that whole dinner scene happened, I actually got the chills. Mm-hmm. Like, and when things get serious, I'm in it and I'm focused and I'm nervous. They, from what I can see so far in the show, they do a really good job of, like, really captivating you into it. And then when something odd or creepy happens, it kind of throws you for a loop a bit because you're like, oh, shit, I forgot, like, right. something weird's happening. We've been on this joyride, right, of this, like, little yeah. household. And then it's like, no, 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 something else is really going yeah, on. Yeah, and it just seems like Wanda really wants to hold on to, like, this idealic type of American life. Yeah. The West, what she probably watched in Sokovia from her TV. Like, the thing this that is... she never had. Exactly. But... What is an episode of A Bite Of without a special segment? So here we are again for another segment of Mystery Marvels. (laughs) You guys should see how he stances when he does that. I become a superhero. Oh, God. (laughs) So, of course, we all know that I dig into my childhood collection of Marvel trading cards. And this time around, I have plucked out a supervillain named the terrifying, the horrible Gideon. I'm, mm, yeah, it's pretty normal. That's like, come on. It's better than Megan. Megan. (laughs) This is her stepdad, Gideon. Is it really? No, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> God, they need to come up with better names. I'm Megan. My mom's wife. My mom's husband, Gideon, whenever. We hate him. <laughs> so Gideon has, I don't know, some sort of pants on with a magenta vest and Ooh. nothing underneath. Oh. And some gold coils that go from his whis- his whis- his wrists <laughs> up to his mid arm. And he has, he's bald except for a very long and luxurious white ponytail. Okay. Yeah, he's got stuff happening. The picture you painted in my head is not okay. Oh, it's even worse. <laughs> I, just, I just showed Noah the card. God. <laughs> so let us get into the back matter of this card here, of Mr. Gideon. His real name is Gideon. Uh, he's like Cher. He only has one name. Oh, very nice. much like Mangan. Um, His group affiliation is the Prophets, and the S in Prophets is a dollar sign, much like Kesha. And his first appearance was in New Mutants 98 from 91. Mm-hmm. So his most powerful power rating is that of fighting ability, and he has a five out of seven. Not bad. I still don't understand why this seven? out of seven thing. I don't understand why they stop. It's like they just even, ran out of room on the card. Yeah, even numbers, guys. Even numbers. Give me an eight. Yeah. Five. <laughs> I take five. Yeah. 
Something about seven, so weird. So here's his little bio. Emerging from a mysterious past, the millionaire known only as Gideon has made quite a name for himself. Although gifted with the astounding ability to duplicate the powers of any opponent he faces, Gideon is gaining notoriety not only as a combatant, but also as a corporate raider. Buying many businesses, Gideon, with the help of former New Mutant Sunspot, has become one of the most powerful and deadly businessmen ever. Ever. What? Okay, so... So, listen, this is what he does, this villain. So he's like Peter Petrelli, but an asshole. He sees failing <laughs> businesses, and he buys them. Oh, my God. And he's a maniac. <laughs> and this is his quote on the back. It pays to be prepared in business and in pleasure. Oh, no. It can oh, mean the difference between life and death. He looks just as worse as he said. Like, they... He he's trash. They took Lex Luthor and put a ponytail on him, like, but also made him an asshole. <laughs> yeah, and what I should say that one of his fists is glowing with like fire, and the sunspot. other one's glowing with like a sun. Okay, who's Sunspot? The New Mutants. He was in the New Mutants movie. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. okay. He uh, okay. I mean, did Ed Hardy make his costume? <gasps> oh my God, yes. Like he just needs the extra layer of douche. Where is his trucker hat? <laughs> Don't talk about Charger Heads. You know you had one. Of course I had one. I don't have one now. Please. I wanted to be a cool Von Dutch trucker hat guy so badly in college, but your boy was poor, so he could not afford that shit. But when he was in the city at school, he was jealous of everybody else that had one. Good card. Good card. I uh, hate him and his costume, and I have never heard of him before. Also, putting S- dollar signs for S's is never okay. No. Kesha. TikTok. <laughs> on the clock wait i love kesha i don't but it's, it's fine. fine okay yeah. we're fighting now it's, it's fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's see you guys next time bye thanks for listening to a bite of artwork and editing by our own noah be sure to subscribe and follow us on instagram at a bite of pod and on facebook at a bite of if you have questions recommendations or just want to say hi you can email us at a bite of pod at gmail.com you can find us on all podcast platforms please be sure to rate and review to spread the word. Hope you join us next time on A Bite Of. Bye.